A Ride to Remember by Stacey Adams. I ride my bike alone, the solitude as much a part of the experience as the wind, the exercise, the movement, a sort of meditation. I'm comfortable being alone, not so much in large groups. But one day a year, that all changes. I join hundreds of riders as we come together to honor and remember our loved ones who have been touched by cancer. Every year, I do the ride for Roswell, a fundraiser for a local hospital known and regaled for its cancer research. My best friend Marie died from cancer at the age of 42. It changed my life in many ways, bringing my own mortality to the forefront of my mind. My mother only lived 31 days after she was diagnosed with lung cancer, a month that was both heartbreaking and heartwarming. Unfortunately, my list goes on. Many others have similar connections to the dead. Many others have similar connections to the dreaded disease, which leads us all here to the ride. As we gather with our bikes at the ready, adrenaline on high, I look around. People have signs, t-shirts, hats bearing names of those they are riding for, as I have Marie and Mom signs on my bike. The vibe is excited yet solemn, too. My thoughts are private, but I can let them escape here with a joyous yell. Today I will ride with others and share their pain and joy. Such a mix of emotions is palpable. It's in the air. Strangers bonding together as we mourn our losses and celebrate our victories. We straddle our bicycles, anxious to begin our journey. Just before the gate slides open to release us, we take a moment of silence, which is all-consuming. Then we're off in a roar, a massive group pedaling, as if we were a tightly knit music group whose instruments are so in tune, their music so sweet, we perform as one. We get into a rhythm, pacing ourselves for the long ride ahead. The group slowly spreads out, the faster riders speeding on. For me, this ride isn't about speed, it's about the distance. I'm going the distance for those who could not. I'm remembering them as I run each person through my mind, thinking good thoughts as I pedal. I recall when Marie and I were collecting unemployment. One time we got our checks and drove out of town, not knowing where we were going, but we had money in two weeks before we had to be back for the next check. So off we went on an adventure. Thumbing through brochures we picked up at a rest stop in Pennsylvania, we saw there was a bluegrass festival in Ohio. Cool, next stop, Ohio. With a crumpled road map spread across my lap, bare feet on the dashboard, and music blaring in my ears, I navigated us through the boring Ohio landscape to the festival site. We pitched our tent alongside many others in the vast field and headed out to hear some music. We had a blast, the weekend was so much fun. We met people that would remain long distance friends for years. We heard bands we had only listened to on records. I got to see Bill Monroe and Earl Scruggs in person. We danced and danced as the fiddles wailed and the stand-up bass thumped, and the drums beat a rhythm for us to follow. We got sunburned and drunk. We laughed so hard it hurt. We created a memory I would cherish forever. I was unaware that Marie would be gone soon after. Passing on your left, Stacy, brings me back from my wandering thoughts. Riders are passing me and calling out my name, which I wear on a bib pinned on my back. A group sporting matching blue t-shirts rides by. The team is called Rodney's Rockets. I take a moment to think who Rodney might be, and I hope he knows he has a support team riding for him. I believe Mom and Marie and all the others I ride for know I'm doing this for them. I'm pedaling along the Erie Canal now, watching a few colorful kayaks pedaling downstream, their brightness standing out against the murky, dark green water. I wave as I go by. I've ridden almost 10 miles and I'm feeling great. The weather is perfect, cool with just a slight breeze, a mix of clouds and sun. My mother hated the sun and the wind. She was not an outdoorsy kind of person. Any exposed skin would burn instantly in the sun. The wind would mess up her hair. I remember her walking on the beach in Fort Myers, Florida, with her white purse clutched under an arm, in long sleeves, long pants, sneakers, and a kerchief tied around her hair while everyone else was in skimpy bathing suits. She didn't care. She was going to dress how she felt comfortable. God, how I loved that about her. I got my gumption from her. She didn't take any crap from anyone, ever. She stood up for herself and was proud of who she was. I'm glad I inherited those traits. There are others I wish I didn't, but the good with the bad, I guess. Picturing her in her going-to-the-beach outfit, I have to smile and laugh. She was a character. I wish I had been allowed more time to know her better. 
I've been riding for hours. The rest stops are long gone. I rode along Ellicott Creek, the Erie Canal, and the Niagara River, a very picturesque route to be sure. I passed through neighborhoods where people sat in their front yards cheering me on as I glided by. Words of encouragement, always a plus, making you feel a part of something bigger than yourself. Strangers to me, yet they support my effort, urging me on. Our paths cross for a moment, and we know we share something special. More memories being created while my mind is already filled with remembering. I'm coming into the home stretch now. I feel tired, but it's a good tired. I see the finish line ahead, both sides of the road lined with people cheering, clapping, laughing, smiling, and clanging cowbells, a cacophony of sound. I feel such an overwhelming joy, my smile huge, yet I can't hide the tears streaming down my face. They're yelling for me, for the ride I completed, for the people I loved, for the memories I have, for those who have been taken but not forgotten.